Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Dr. Stone episode 17 to see how accurate all the science and technology in the TV show really are. Alright, I mean, that is really clever, and I personally would have never thought to do that, but I also don't believe that this is a very practical method of getting information. What Senku's father is suggesting is that they work backwards to find like the first post of like on any social media platform of where this green light started so they can find out like you know where the where the earth started turning into stone. But I don't I mean how would we even do that right here right now? For the most part when we like see something it's always like uh, world something happened in Argentina, right? Like the the headline usually tells us the location of what's going on. But if he's just searching like hashtag green light, I mean, that can take you anywhere. Like, I don't know how he's able to narrow down his search to determine it started exactly in South America. I'll, okay, I'll just tell you right now. That dude is not about to swim 10 kilometers anywhere. And like, especially him in the situation that he's in, there's no way that he could swim like at all when he comes back to Earth. Think about this for a second. When you're in space, it just, your, your entire life is so different in ways that you can't possibly imagine. The way that you sleep, the way that you go to the bathroom, the way that you shower, the way that you eat, the way that you, you don't even drink water, you eat water when you're on space. It, everything is completely different. And not only that, like your bone density decreases the longer you're up there. The way that your heart pumps blood throughout your body is different because when you're in space, you're never upright. If you're in space for one month, then your recovery time upon returning to Earth is six months or up to one year. Astronaut Chris Hadfield said after getting back from his space mission, he could feel the weight of his tongue and his teeth in his mouth. Like when he got back, he couldn't speak, let alone move for about a week. So that's why I can guarantee like when he comes back to the surface of the Earth, like even if he's been in space for one week, to immediately swim 10 kilometers, which is a pretty physically intensive activity, is not possible. Like 10, 10 kilometers is a decent drive, <laughs> okay? And you're saying that he's gonna swim that distance? There, there's no possible way he's gonna do that. つまり... That certainly explains a lot. <laughs> I, I was questioning how they're all able to communicate and speak to each other, and that's. I'm so glad the show answered that question. Uh, they can all communicate with each other because everyone in that village are distant relatives of each other. You can use genetics to determine who are the descendants of like the founders just based on like their hair color, their eye color, their height. You would have to know like the dominant and recessive alleles for those specific traits. For example, if one of the villagers has blonde hair, there's a higher chance that they came, or like they're the descendant of a founder who had blonde hair. Much likely that if they have just white hair, they're probably closely related to Senku's father more than someone who has blonde hair or black hair or whatever other color. From what we saw on the show, none of the astronauts wore glasses, but there are people that we know, so far two of them, that have weak vision. And well, there actually might be more people in the village who have weak eyesight, or like the fuzzy sickness that they call it. They just don't want to admit it, or they just don't even know. But if you were to draw like a pundit square to determine this, it would probably show that weak vision was a recessive trait and not passed on very often, which is why most people in the village have very good vision, because that was most likely dominant. That also could probably explain why they were able to just survive for this long. Because if all of them are descendants of the astronauts, like what we know from the astronauts exam, 
you need to be one of the smartest people on earth and you need to have like a certain height, body weight, blood pressure, like you need to have a lot of physical things that are ideal and you also need to pass a physical fitness exam, a mental health exam, your education level has to be very, very high. So these people like in the village, these are all the sons and daughters and great, great, great granddaughters of people with very high IQ and they're of like the top minds on earth. So most of these descendants should be really intelligent and very clever. With the exception of the singer, I don't know how she was even able to get into space in the first place. <laughs> I, I just realized something when I was watching like those kids play on the beach. This will be, yeah, this will be the first time ever in human history that the next generation will have access to fewer technology, less information, and just less knowledge of medicine than the generation before them. It's always been the longer that humans have been on Earth, the more information we acquire, the better technology we have. Like, the more, like, vast our knowledge of medicine becomes. Like, everything always improves. Like, we always have more information, not less. Except, this is probably the only time where that's reversed. Oddly enough, the people who are direct descendants of astronauts may believe that the Earth is flat. Because nobody in the village actually has any understanding of how the Earth looks. Like, it's not like they can just pull up Google Earth on their phone. Like, they, they truly believe that what they have around them is all there is to life. I don't think that they would have any knowledge about really anything that these astronauts know about. Which brings me to my next question. Why, if these guys are so clever and so smart, didn't they just leave this dense forest, which they landed in Japan, I can't imagine there's a lot of forest area in Japan, and then just go to the cities and bring back with them like cars and any farming equipment, like textbooks for education. I mean, there's so much technology that's just in Japan. All they have to do is like walk a couple, this guy was willing to swim 10 kilometers. I'm sure he can walk that distance way easier and just bring back all of the modern technology that is still, it still exists right now. It's all within a long walking distance, but there's grocery stores for food. Okay, I, I'm, pro I'm rambling at this point, but I don't know why these guys, instead of building a whole new civilization, why didn't they just go to the what already exists and then bring all that technology back or raise their kids like in that place so that they could all have access to these textbooks and educate all of them? Either that or I'm missing a very, very crucial detail that people in the comments will probably tell me about, but I don't know why these guys didn't just go back into town and bring back a bunch of stuff. I'm not quite sure why that would ever happen because, well, I mean, I don't know what would cause like a satellite or the International Space Station to just start hurling towards Earth. The Earth is pretty large and satellites are around the Earth. So they're in like a whole outer layer that's even larger than the Earth itself. And for two satellites that are currently in space to collide with each other is highly, highly unlikely. Just for one, the distance between each satellite is like a hundred kilometers or more. Like they're not at all close to each other, partially for that reason that they don't interfere with each other. Additionally, they're all orbiting the same planet, Earth. So they would all be falling at the same rate. It's not like one satellite would be moving faster than the other satellite and then they would collide with each other eventually. They're all orbiting around at relatively the same pace. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you found some value in it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more Dr. Stone, then put that in the comments below as well. If there's any other TV show or movie that you want me to commentate over, go ahead and put that in the description below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.